I have always been fascinated with robotics at an early age. The idea of machines performing autonomous tasks has lured me into the world of electronics. I'm sure it would be nice to have a state-of-the-art machine in my garage but just couldn't afford to own one. These machines don't normally come cheap. So I decided to build one from scratch. I use wood as they are cheap and easy to process. For the body, I use ordinary plywood source from the local hardware store. And so is the lumber used for the frame. I prepare each part before assembling them together, adding all the holes as needed. I also use basswood from Hobby Lobby store for the side cover. I then apply wood glue on the frame and attach them together. I apply pressure and let it cure overnight. I reinforce the frame with wood screws, as wood glues tend to wear off over time, from my experience, especially when moving parts are involved. I also drilled holes for the inserts to mount the cover later on. For brackets and gears, I 3D printed these parts. I installed inserts on the motor brackets. For the motors, I used drill motors. These are cheaper motors that can be obtained from old drills, and the bonus is they are already geared. After removing the chuck, I filed the shaft for the set screw to lock on. 
I then mount the motor on the bracket and reuse the motor screws. Then I mount the motor assembly to the frame. I position the side panel in place. I then insert screws on the middle wheel bracket. The shape of the brackets are designed as simple as possible. As most 3D printer owners already know, the simpler the shape, the faster is the printing time. The assembly is then mounted on the frame. Next is the front wheel bracket. This is made of two parts to adjust the tension of the track. Assembly is then mounted. The same is done on the other side. For the 3D printed sprocket, a hub is attached on it and tightened with a self-locking nuts. Sprocket is then mount on the motor. To mount the middle wheel, I use a spacer to align it to the sprocket. I used caster wheels instead of 3D printed wheel as I have several of them from my previous projects. I did the same for the front wheel. Now for the tracks, I used PVC pipes and cut them to certain lengths. I then drilled holes through them.
a large hole on one side to fit the screw heads. I then mount them on bicycle chains and bolted them with lock nuts. This is the most time consuming part of the build. Once done, I attach the tracks on the wheels and adjust the tensioner. I add a side plate just to cover all the wheels. This is just to make it look neat. Same thing is done on the other side. As for the electronics, I use a motor driver on each motor. I solder the motor wires taking into consideration the correct spin direction as the motors are mounted opposite to each other. I then connect the shared power lines. The drill motors run on 12 volts, so my power is 12 volts or as near to it. I then use an RC receiver as the motor drivers uses pulse wave modulation signal to run the motors. This is just temporary as I will be using Pixhawk flight controller down the road to run the rover autonomously. Now to test the assembly. Everything seems to work well. Let's give it a try. So I found this direct TV cover and I just added it on the top cover for aesthetics.
all my excitement, I forgot to tighten the hub. That's why the wheel came off. Let's try that again after tightening both hubs. If you like this video, please check my other videos as well. Thank you guys for watching.